Hello my loves, welcome. It is 2023. It has been more than a hot minute. It has been like a hot eternity since I have filmed just my regular makeup videos here on YouTube. As you guys obviously know, I'm pregnant with baby number two. But you're gonna laugh at me. This is literally what I have on my table because I can't do these without snacks. So I have some cucumbers and tomatoes. And then I also have a bag of sour lollies, which has been one of my biggest like unhealthy cravings. Which, anyway, I'm feeling really good, really happy and motivated to be back. So I do have some of my usual products and then I have some new products that I'm gonna be trying. So there's no specific theme for today's video. I'm just gonna get into it. So I'm just gonna start off on my brows. And I've actually gone back to one of the biggest OGs, the Anastasia Brow Wiz. No brown definer in soft brown. But I honestly go back and forth between like a million brow pencils. Also, while we're here, what do you guys think of my hair? I feel like every year when it gets warm, I go back to the highlights and the short hair. But I don't know if I should keep it or grow it out. If I should stay light or go back to dark, like should I go lighter or should I make it more balayage, like what should I do? I honestly do value the opinion of you guys, so let me know what you think. What a little brow sculpting can do, like I didn't do that much, but it's made the biggest difference, has it not? I'm literally only up to the eyebrows and I haven't stopped eating. All of these lollies are sour, by the way. Good craving. I've still really been loving the NYX brow glue for a brow gel. I feel like there's not really many new products that I've adopted into my routine since I was last filming. I mean, there are a few, but not like a whole lot. I'm definitely a creature of habit, and if something works, I'll just keep repurchasing it. But I am a sucker for buying what oh what did I just do? I am a sucker for purchasing whatever's trending, however, like it doesn't mean that I'm just gonna stop using my OGs altogether. Okay. To hydrate, I'm going in with the Esme Skin Minerals Probiotic Skin Milk. And you guys can see I've used quite a bit of this. I absolutely love this product. So it's a moisturizer, but like a really nice thin consistency. And this absolutely saved my life with all of the sunburn, sunburn, sunburn I've been getting this summer. Oh, this looks crazy. I really love this stuff. And for anyone that remembers last year, last year is in 2022, so very recently, a few months ago, my skin was horrible. And if you go back a few videos, you'll see how bad my skin was because I was mixing together, I think just way too many different types of skincare products for my skin. And I wasn't sure at the time what was doing it, but I think I pinned it down to a specific serum that I was using and it was a glycolic serum and when I first started using this serum um, pretty much every day I felt like it was doing wonders for my skin and then I realized that I think my skin was overcompensating and that's why my skin just went crazy. My skin's pretty much back to its normal form however I do have a little bit of Oh my god, it's so windy. I do have a little bit of excess scarring, which isn't too bad, not complaining about it. But anyway, when I decided to cut back on all of my products, I was using this and just a Clinique under eye cream for a few months and just a normal Cetaphil face wash. And then once my skin felt like it went back to normal, I ended up purchasing a Le Mer skin set with a serum under eye cream. Um, and a face cream and then a face washer and I've been using that for a little while and it's good however do I feel like it's worth the money probably not I just feel like if I was using the most simplified skincare routine for so many months and it's not necessary however I do understand that with skincare it's not always what you see 
in the present moment but it's what it does for your skin for the years to come and i feel like that's why there's so much misconception with skincare because people don't understand that what you do to your skin is what's going to reflect when you're older so a new product that i have never tried before i've had this sitting in my cupboard for such a long time is the huda beauty uh, blur jam silicone free smoothing primer how interesting is the texture of it so I am going to, oh that feels so interesting, I am going to go in and prep my skin with this today. I feel like you don't need a lot. Okay, let's see, is it blurring? Yeah, I feel like it is. Hmm. Yeah, that does look like it has blurred my pores a little bit. Feels really nice on the skin. Although it's blurring, it doesn't feel drying or mattifying. It just feels like a nice blurring primer. Okay. Next up, I'm going to be color correcting using the Bobbi Brown Skin Corrector in Peach. I know this sounds so silly, but another reason why I feel like I haven't been filming as much is because I have two new collections that are launching this year. They were actually meant to launch September and then November, but when I feel pregnant and I just didn't feel up to filming at the beginning, I didn't want to launch, um, you know, without giving the collection 100% because I actually launched my first ever collection for my brand. I mean, it's still the same brand, but I have rebranded. It's the same amazing quality and, you know, brand. I just updated my logo and changed the name slightly. I feel like that kind of gives away <laughs> what's happening with the brand. We're just going in a slightly different direction and that direction is not so much focusing on what's trending, but I do want to create a more timeless, you know, classy, elegant brand that I can grow into and I feel like represents what I feel like matters and is going you know to stand the test of time so I can't wait to share that with you guys so I did actually shoot two campaigns when I was in my early pregnancy with Ava so early that I didn't even know I was pregnant yet but we were trying did I just say Ava not Ava baby number two. So when I was trying to fall pregnant, I knew that when I did fall pregnant, it would potentially be rough because my first pregnancy was. So I had done the content shoot for two upcoming collections, which I did delay putting into final production after I had the final samples because I really wanted to give it 100% and really just be here present online to showcase the products to you guys and just constantly be creating looks with them and you know teaching you guys how to use them so there are two collections that are fully approved and they are about to start production i'm also testing so many other things at the moment that i haven't quite gotten the formulas and the colors right yet but soon there's been so many things that i've wanted to launch but i don't want to rush i think i've had the camera rolling for two hours and this is all i've done so for foundation i'm going in with the hoodie beauty stick in tres leches this shade is really nice for my natural tan. Yes, this is my natural tan. Usually I'm talking about matching my foundation to my spray tan. Oh my god, this could even be too light for my natural tan, to be honest. Let's see. No, I think that's pretty good. Um, I haven't had to fake tan, which has been really nice because we've spent so much time in the sun lately. And I'm not mad about it. Sometimes I do like to go in lighter with this foundation and then mix it with a liquid But I'm really liking the color with my tan at the moment So I'm just gonna wear this stick foundation on its own and it does give a really beautiful full Like medium to full coverage. No, it's definitely more full coverage, but the finish is just beautiful It's probably one of the nicest full coverage foundations that doesn't leave you feeling cakey So I really love this one To carve out my brows, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Canel. So what I like to do is carve the brow but then also drag it down as my eyeshadow base because 
I've never ever ever really got the hang of um, eyeshadow primers. I've just always loved using my concealer and I feel like it just does the same if not a better job. And I say that with confidence because it doesn't only work on myself, but I was doing bridal makeup that way for many years and it just worked. And it saves you having to buy an extra unnecessary product in your kit. So most of the time I will use the Milk Makeup um, Matte Bronzer Stick, but I wanted to show you guys this. I'm pretty sure, actually, I don't know, I feel like MCO Beauty is an Australian, yeah, oh, okay, designed in Australia, made in PRC. It's an Australian brand, so it is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury uh, contour. So I'm going to use it today. And then I'm just going to blend up. I haven't put concealer on yet because sometimes it gets a little messy doing it before a lot of cream contouring. And today's look is going to be full glam because I feel like I owe it to you guys since I've been away for so long and delivering a lot of boring natural looks which are generally what I wear but they're not as fun to watch okay, so the nose I love a good snap so I'm going to go heavier under here to shorten the nose and then I'm going to draw like a little button you guys know what I mean by that, right? So what I mean by button is that little line there and it's gonna make it look like I have more of a cute little button nose. I'm just gonna get a bit on my lips as well. And then lastly, just a bit up on the forehead. For concealer, I'm going in with the NARS She Glow in Canel. This is like another just OG fave that I don't know if it's cool anymore to use NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, but I love it. I do want to, however, try some of the new trending products. Like I think I've seen on TikTok the Kosas Concealer is super popular. What else are people using? Let me know in the comments any trending products that I'm missing out on that I haven't tried. This shade is really nice. Not to overly highlight, but just to go a few shades lighter than your foundation or my foundation. But this is a few shades lighter for me and it just gives a really nice brightening effect without being too white. It still has that little bit of a peachy um, undertone that I love. And I'm going back over my eyelids for a little bit of extra prep. Just added a little bit more right into the tear duct area because that's where I have most of my darkness. Now this is where it gets tricky because there's a lot of products from here onwards that I use that I can't show you guys because then I'm gatekeeping and that's not fair. So I'm going to use some, you know, OG favorites that you can get. I'm going to go in with, of course, the OG, yeah, this is just the normal translucent um, by Laura Mercier. Taking my little beauty blender puff and I'm just going to pack this under the eyes and I'm going to leave it to bake while we do eyeshadow today. And then for the rest of the face, another tried and true, the Charlotte Tilbury in medium two. That rhymes. <laughs> and then I'm just lightly setting my lids with the translucent powder. I don't like to use the face powder because I don't really want to add any pigment. So today I'm actually going to use a new eyeshadow palette. So I have tried the Huda Beauty palettes a million times before. I've loved pretty much all of her palettes 
Um, some of them have been my favourites. There's been a few, particularly the little ones that just don't do much for me. However, these big ones are always just amazing and full of just stunning formulas. So I'm definitely going to use this today and there's some really pretty shades. I feel like this is really nice. I'm going to swatch it. Oh, that's like a pretty bronze shade. And then we've got, oh, that's stunning. A really pretty champagne -y gold. And then we have up here, oh, that's nice too. A really nice traditional gold. And then we've got like a rose gold here. These are all absolutely stunning. I don't have any makeup wipes in this room and I don't want to get up. So I'm just going to show you guys like this. So I mean, looking at this palette, it's pretty self-explanatory that it's going to be a nudie, bronzy, glowy goddess look. Um, so I'm going to start off with the shade Keep Going, which is a little more of a, like a peachy transition shade rather than like a cool tone, which I think works really well for the shades that you've got in this palette. So I'm going to start off just on the outer corner and drag in. Okay, it definitely shows up a little more cool tone, which I like. Um, yeah, mind you, I haven't done much full glam at all lately. It's definitely been a lot more natural, no lash looks. So today I'm going to put my skills to the test and see if I still got it. I love how nicely these shadows build up. What I've just noticed about this palette is that there's not actually um, like a darker transition shade. There's only these creamy products, which I mean, I don't see why I can't use it. I'm just going to go in with this shade because I do want to stick to one palette. I honestly hate when I jump between a million palettes, especially when they're a little more on the pricey side because I know that's annoying. The whole point is to want to be able to do a look with one palette. So that's what we're doing today. So the first shade was Keep Going. This one's called Legacy. Oh, that's actually nice. It's still quite a lot darker. I need to find some sort of an eyeliner brush. I think this will do. And I want to test out this. Um, what is this called? It doesn't really say. It's like a gel kind of formula. I'm going to go in with the black one in the shade Purpose. Oh, I like that. So it's going to be a little more softer and easier to blend than an eyeliner. So see how it blends out as you apply it. Which I actually like because we know it's not an eyeliner, so we don't have that expectation, but it's going to give you that same kind of effect without the intensity. I feel like you could easily just go in with this alone and ditch the eyeliner if you don't want a sharp look. You may do that, let's see. I hope you guys can see, I always get carried away watching what I'm doing. In the mirror and forget that you guys want to see too. <laughs> okay, and we're not going to be modest here. We are going to go crazy with the wing. And mind you, I'm still going to put one of the shimmers all over the lid. We're not being boring today. I'm interested to see how this does hold up like throughout the day with lashes on and like you know, as time goes by, if it fades, because I know when I do eyeshadow, it doesn't stay obviously as intense, but this is like a gel, so we'll see what it does. And then I'm just going to try run a little bit right here, just to elongate my eye. Mommy. Hi, Mama. How are you? What are you doing? Are you having fun? Said I'll, I'll be there soon, okay? Okay. I'm coming in there when Yeah. Oh. So I need to pick a shade to go in with and I'm feeling like 
this manifest it shade is going to give me the most insane glow on the lid. That's really pretty. So this is kind of like a coppery rose gold. Yeah, I love that. I feel like you get over just going like the safe champagne gold all the time. And this is like so pretty. So this has like a um, gel in it, the formula. I don't know if you guys saw it before I swiped it. So it's going to give that really nice wet effect. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm just going to take a brush just to go in and like really define it. Because I feel like the finger doesn't give you that. And then I'm just going back in with the shade Legacy, which is the slightly darker shade to intensify everything because anytime you start with the matte shade you almost always have to go back in no matter how pigmented the shadows are and then I'm going to go back in with keep going so basically I'm going to go backwards so like whatever I started with will be what I end with and that's generally how you're going to get the most blended look for the purpose of really testing this out, I'm not going to use a liquid eyeliner and I'm just going to stick solely to this gel product in the pan. And it does start off a little bit shiny, but when you blend it, it does get not completely matte, but like a satin finish, which I think is really pretty. And then I'm going to go in with the shade Keep Going and Legacy mixed for the under eye and I'm definitely going to do black or brown in the waterline today because we're not being boring not that not having it is boring but like if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it properly so of course I'm gonna wear falsies and I have this little lash book that I bought off Amazon like not the lashes these are just all of my lashes so I'm just going to grab something so if I don't have the description I'm sorry but I just couldn't be bothered measuring and trimming a new lash <laughs> I feel like this is going to look really intense because I have a really soft black on the top this just feels so crazy when you haven't done it in so long This definitely looks like so many other looks I've done, but how many bronze looks can you really do? So I'm just curling my lashes before I go in with falsies. Okay, and then I'm going in with the NARS Climax Mascara. I've really been loving this mascara on the days that I don't wear any falsies. It's really good on its own. Like that's one coat, no falsies. And then, oh, I should really dust away the powder first, but oh well. Oh. So now we can dust this away. And I'm also pressing rather than wiping so we don't lose coverage under the eyes. So before I go in and add blush, highlight, bronzer, lips, I'm going to pop the lashes on so we know where we're at with intensity. Because this is really, I mean, it's already intense, but we could go like super intense. I go a massive lash which I'm not honestly not feeling. I apologize but I genuinely have no idea what lash this is. Do I do eyeliner? Do I not? So what I'm going to do is do my lips because my lips are the indicator um, and then decide. So I'm just going to add a bit of setting spray first. I'm going in with the Rare Beauty, but instead of spraying it all over, I'm going to drench my sponge 
and then just go in and beauty blend over my face under the eyes is the most important because that's where you're going to look the most powdery for bronzer I'm going in with the MAC Give Me Sun so this is like a mineral bronzer it's not a matte bronzer so it's not really going to be a contouring shade but more of a, a warming shade and just add a little bit of like color back into the face after adding a million layers of powder <laughs> so for blush i'm going in with the laura lee blush aesthetic palette which has the most pretty display of universal shades so i'm going to go in and mix tiger lily and chateau rose which are both beautiful shades of pink one's a little more mauve one's a little more blue based and the brush is also from laura lee los angeles and I'm not going to be shy with the blush. So for lip liner, I'm going in with the Kevin Aquan lip liner in the shade Carnell. And I have been so obsessed with this. I have been wearing this almost every day. And the funny thing was I was not fond of this lip liner at all when I first purchased it. However, it's become one of my favorites. So I'm just making sure we stay within the lip line here and then we can overline at the top. And then same thing down the bottom. So I don't know if you can see the shade has a really cute feminine like rosy mauve undertone which I think I used to be really obsessed with the Cool Tone Browns. However, now I'm kind of over it. I still do love a good brown lip liner. However, I've definitely been navigating more towards, you know, my pinky shades. And the brush is really handy because you can just feather it in on your lips. So I'm just going to touch on the edges with the Anastasia Cool Brown really slightly just to had that a little bit more definition without changing the color to your heart. because I'm going to go in with something a little more fun that I haven't actually tried for the lips so for the actual lipstick I am using a lipstick that I've never tried before so I did see Amrezi use this in a TikTok and it was just the most stunning like in between a nude and like a pinky pale this is the rouge coco flash a lipstick from chanel and the shade is 54 boy i've been really loving those more high-end vibe lipsticks that don't really do much they just kind of enhance your lips i did think it was going to be a little bit more of like a sheer nude but it is really pretty it's definitely not dark whatsoever but i feel like because it is a shiny lipstick it's going to just play on whatever lip liner you've got on so if you go for a more light lip liner you're going to get more of a nude look i feel like i just need a little bit of highlight and then i'm done so i'm going to go in with christina's highlighter in the shade lumiera and then i'm going to pop that on the inner corner so pretty and then i'm going to take a little bit onto my nose Okay guys, so this is today's look complete. I hope you enjoyed it. It's definitely giving glowy goddess. If anyone knows how to combat flyaways, I feel like since I got highlights, my flyaways are just crazy. I just put literal setting spray on my hair, but it's fine. So that is it for today's video. I love you all so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.